Hey everyone, it's the beginning of the month, and you know what that means. PlayStation Plus, PlayStation Now, and PlayStation VR. Oh my. <laughs> and also, E3 may be coming, but Sony's not going with it. <laughs> it's Crossroads. Welcome to the show tonight, the PlayStation podcast for Boss Rush Games. I'm one of your hosts, Laron Dawkins, and this show wouldn't be anything without my fellow stationaries pressing that share button right beside me tonight. Typo Queen Nelly Lott, what's up? Homework is what's up. <laughs> when is it going to stop? When is it going to change? <laughs> Probably, what, my last day is the 27th? The 27th this year? The 27th of when? <laughs> the 27th of this when? Month. Wait, you're, okay, wait. Wait, so you are you graduating? No, not yet. Uh, I graduated in August with my first degree in my... Uh... See, that's what I was asking, the 27th oh, of this year? That's, that's what I was asking. 2077. I know, I I know, I sounded, I know, I sounded illiterate just now when I asked that question. <laughs> but, but that's what I, I meant. 2077. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! Hey, hey, PlayStation Doctor, what's up, Austin? <laughs> before oh, before much. Nelly before uh, Nelly just runs runs like a bit. Uh, <laughs> what's up, Austin? <laughs> I'm just being the shark in this world, man. That's what I'm like. <laughs> I, oh, I am wait. living inside. This wait, wait, be the shark. Wait, wait, wait. Are you are you a man eater? Oh yeah. <laughs> I knew someone had to start singing the song. <laughs> all right, all right. How's everybody's week been? Uh, exciting. I. I get my wisdom teeth pulled tomorrow. Mmm. Mmm. I, I I don't have words for that. I, I get my I get my final round of the COVID vaccine on Thursday. Woo -woo. I need to get that too because I'm, I'm thinking about traveling I'm, home. I'm scared, y'all. <laughs> I've heard I've heard the horror stories. I'm I I am I am literally one of those people that when I get sick, it's the man flu. It doesn't it doesn't matter if it's a cold, if it's a sore throat, if it's the actual flu. When I get sick, it's the man flu. Like, I mean, I already warned my roommates. I have three roommates. I already told them I'm going to be the world's most pitiful person, so get ready to go out and buy me things. Hey, can you please? Please. <laughs> I'm hot. I'm cold. <laughs> Turn down the I'm hot and I'm cold. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Turn down I mean, just one degree. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just dreading, I'm just dreading all, the, I'm just dreading all the, um, the freaking, oh, I've, I've heard the, I've heard the horror stories, even though from what I've been told, <laughs> Make sure you hydrate. You know, like a couple, go, a couple, a couple days going in. Make sure you're completely hydrated and stuff. Stay, stay hydrated. Um, on the first day when you get the shot, depending on how you feel, if uh, if it feels like the symptoms might not be something you can manage, go ahead and um, go ahead and um, pop some Tylenol or something, and you should be all right. What's going on here? Something's going on with my camera. No, I know it looks like I'm doing something weird and funky with my camera, but something, something's going on. Uh, okay, as long as that bad boy's charging, that's all I care about. Because uh, my 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 face cam for stream can't be can't be messing up. <laughs> Let's go. Sh no. I'm about to go so uh, go. Austin, do you have a do you have a good story for this week? Is it doom and gloom for you this week, or? Uh... Oh no, I had a I had a good week. It was uh, Easter weekend, so mm -hmm. got to be with the family and all that. Mm -hmm. had, had some great scalloped potatoes. That you and uh, you and the standard definition crew are missing out on. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, we had some words about about uh about scalp potatoes. We did. But uh, yeah, yeah, just just uh, got to see some family and uh, got to work on a got to work on the weekend as well. So that was triple pay. So that's all nice too. Mm -hmm. um, I had a good week. What all right. Mean when you get big. Right, <laughs> that's right. as big as it gets. <laughs> that's as big as it gets. Oh, when when are the when are the peach preserves coming? That's a good question. They haven't <laughs> got peaches yet, though. So okay. I'm I'm pretty sure it's like towards the beginning of summer is when that oh. happens. So when when I when I see them pull up their trunk full of peaches, I'll know I'll know about what time it's gonna be. All right, <laughs> nice. All right, well, um, let's go ahead and roll into this housekeeping, why don't we?
All right. All right, this is episode 31 of Crossroads, the PlayStation Podcast with Boss Rush Games. Each and every week we come together to bring the latest news, rumors, games, and general discussion in the world of PlayStation. Crossroads is live on twitch.tv slash exodus803, Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we are always glad that you are here and a part of the conversation. Take a moment, please, to give us a follow at PS underscore Crossroads on Twitter. That's where you can find us at mainly. And if you like the show, then please consider subscribing to our podcast. <clears throat> If you're unable to join us live, Crossroads can be found on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other podcast apps, as well as YouTube.com slash Boss Rush Games, and our very own website, BossRushGames.com, on every Thursday. Uh, while you're there, don't forget to check out our growing family of podcast shows available on BossRushGames.com. And also, as a, as, a, as a personal ask, a request, a favor, please, don't forget to share, rate, and review us wherever you check out our show. Hey, uh, hey Nelly. Hey, Austin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's on your plate station tonight? Mm. <laughs> I thought I thought I'd have I thought I'd have some fun here. So we're talking about we're this is the amusement food all stars edition of Plate Station. Basically, I want to know what your favorite amusement park or carnival food snack is. <laughs> I mean. I mean, this is this is the one. I mean, this is the one till our next one. When we call it the one. <laughs> so, one. so and you know what? We'll even we'll even throw. Well, actually, no. We did we did movie theater food uh, a couple of months ago. So movie theaters are off the. Mm -hmm. It's got to be some place that you travel to and you spend money, like you're at a resort and whatnot. You know, so amusement parks, carnivals. I'll even throw in street food. You know, when like there's like little festivals and stuff going on in town like that. So like oh, there's Greek man. fest or stuff like that. You know, I'll even throw that in there. So. Favorite amusement park or favorite amusement park or carnival food snack or food or snack. Um, when you know that these when you know these things are going, like say you're going to Disney World, do you have a separate budget for eating at the parks? Or is it all is it all part of your main budget for going to the park in the first place? Well, and I'm just gonna go broke. <laughs> <laughs> and what's uh and what event has the best food that you can't get enough of? I know Corey wishes he was on the show tonight. I know he does because he saw he saw our notes. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, he was throwing out ideas. <laughs> huh. So who wants to start? I... All right. As a matter of so... fact, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it the same way I did for standard definition on Sunday. We're gonna we're gonna do the first. We're gonna do the first question. So everybody, like, what's your favorite amusement park or carnival food food or snack? And then then we'll roll into the next question after everyone's answered the first question. All right. And uh, and real quick, and real quick, just shout this is Zoomy two thousand nine. What's up, man? Howdy. I'm I'm gonna say, man, this is this is hard. This is hard. I even <laughs> though I've had hours to think about this, I'm still still debating on this. Do you need to phone a friend? Uh, I got it. When I go to the Tulsa State Fair. There's mm -hmm. one thing I have to get, and that is a big old turkey leg. Okay, I knew I knew yeah, turkey I leg was going to show up. Leg. I knew turkey leg was going to show up on this list. I, I knew it. To. The turkey leg, and I, the corn dog, the foot long corn dog, especially when, especially when it comes straight out of that fryer. Not the ones that have been sitting out there for you know a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. everyone, <laughs> everyone just kind of looking out. Oh, no, it's I'm about it's to <laughs> No, I don't want that. <laughs> um, yeah, the, those are the big two. There's a lot of like random stuff though, like pizza on a stick. I'm always down mm, for. Oh God. Uh, that, but I'm telling you, just thinking about all the grease is like actually messing with my stomach right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Nelly, <laughs> you're you're you go, you go. Let's see. I do like funnel cake. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I knew I that was gonna. Get, I knew yeah, that was I gonna make it on the list. Funnel cake because okay. I rarely get it, <laughs> so that's my go-to. Oh, you're like you're like me. I, I, the only time I indulge myself in funnel cakes is when I actually go to an amusement park because mm -hmm. I know how to make funnel cakes at home. And my God, I would be so fat if I did it all the time. <laughs> if I did it all the time, I would be. I would just be. <sighs> I'd be like a roly poly. That's. 
I don't even want to know how to make it just because I I don't want that I don't want that ability. I don't I want can, that power in my hands. I can I can teach you and I won't even charge. <laughs> <laughs> what I heard is you can use pancake mix and boom. Drop <laughs> boom. It, uh, drop it in the oil. Yep. Drop it. Yep. Uh, yeah, use a squeeze use a little use a squeeze bottle like how yep. like oh. <laughs> I don't, some want, hot, I don't want that power. Uh, in some hot oil, in some hot oil, you trying mm-hmm. to be. You don't even have to flip it. That's the good thing. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. Like a, like a lot uh, of good funnel cakes, you want the top side to be soft and the bottom side to be crispy. Yep. So that's my go-to funnel cakes. Okay. Uh, I'm also gonna say funnel cakes. There's also a couple. There's also a, a couple other things. Like if I can't get a funnel cake, let me get really, like one of them really good churros. <laughs> Oh my God, uh, you know it's something about a cinnamon sugar combination. Oh my God, they get get churros or um. There's um there's one other one. There's other one. There's one other one, but it's escaping me right now. Um, because like I was really on this funnel cake thing, and and um and and you know what? I get I get messy with the funnel cake sometimes. I get like the chocolate, the caramel, the the powdered mm-hmm. sugar. <sighs> You know, yeah, um, yeah. but you know what? I'm not a barbarian. I don't get ice cream on top of it. That's just that's just wrong. I, I don't want a soggy. No, I, never did I don't want a soggy funnel cake. <laughs> yeah, once it melts, it's it's not yeah. enjoyable at all. Yeah, like, I gotta have the caramel on there. The caramel and the powdered sugar are the key things I gotta have on the funnel cake. And every so often, I'm in the mood for like whipped cream on it, but they but they can't go ham on that either because the whipped cream, if the if the funnel cake is like super fresh and like piping hot and stuff, like the heat just kind of denaturates the freaking whipped cream and it's like ugh. Yep. What's your opinions on strawberries on the funnel cake though? You can uh, just slice strawberries. On slice there. slice strawberries, yes. But they yep. but they have to be they have to be sliced a certain way. They have to be like in like the not the slivers, but you know like the actual like like thin slices. They have to be like oh, that yeah. because because they're like chunky or like you know like you know how some people like just 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 chop up you know strawberries and just kind of like throw them on there. Nah, they have, okay. there's got to be like some there's got to be like a little bit of artesian flair to it. <laughs> yeah. food, the food snob comes out on me with you know with stuff that's like twelve thousand calories. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, zoom in the chat. Uh, pineapple Dole Whip. I I pineapple Dole Whip. I don't know. I've never had that before. Like you got you got to tell us in the chat what that actually really is. Like it, what it is and what it's like. Because uh, pineapple pineapple anything sounds like a good time already. But I'm but I need I need to know specifically what this is. <laughs> uh, oh oh you know what. Oh, I know what it was now. Corn dog nuggets. Never corn heard dog, corn cor- dog corn, nuggets. Corn dog nuggets. You know, I do like. I, I, not, <laughs> not corn dodgers, though, right? We're, no, we're corn dodgers. I've never had. I don't think I've ever those, had that. Those are the those are the cream corn Ugh. little fried cream. Corn. Oh, no, yeah. no, no, yes, no, no. Corn dodgers. Those things suck. Get you know what? Out of here. <laughs> oh God! I didn't even know. I didn't know that's a thing that existed. No. Oh, well, d- down here it does, and unfortunately, <laughs> it's at Disney. Oh, oh, it's at Disney. Okay. That means that means Corey and Josh will know all about it. Oh yeah, yeah, because uh... <laughs> they they live up at that. But at, every yeah. time they're on Arsenal X or, or Standard Definition together, they're always having this banter about like what they do when they. It's, it's always Chef Mickey's and uh, and what's the one place? Uh, the Earl of Sandwich. They, they, they're always oh, yeah. about it. Always. Don't ask me. No. Reason number two, Corey wishes he was on this spot. He would know what this pineapple dole <laughs> is. Right. Yeah. Exactly. All right, uh, all right. So, do you guys have a separate? Do you have? Do you guys have a meal expenditure for a, a meal budget for when you go to amusement parks? Because I mean, I, I usually get a day pass that 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 you know, like I can walk in and walk out of that place. Because I mean, the food at amusement parks, like if you're there all day and you decide you want to get like a meal or something, you know, on top of your your snack stall and stuff, man, you've bar- you've already yeah. spent the same money you spent for the admission. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So do you yeah. guys have a separate budget, or do you just, or are you just like, I'm, I'm gonna walk out this bitch broke tonight? <laughs> no, I got a budget. <laughs> nope, I don't even play that. 
Because even if when I we went. Oh, go ahead, ahead Nelly. Oh, I was about to say, even uh, we had went to Epcot. Mm-hmm. And I, no, was, and I heard Ep- I heard Epcot some good eating. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my goodness. They, uh, of course, they do, like, the foods for different parts of the world. Sorry, I was reading the chat. And, um, yeah, I me too. Stopped at uh, France, pretty much. And I was like, hey, I want those macarons. Oh. <laughs> those, those bad boys were expensive. I was like, this is it. <laughs> 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 this is it. Nah, I tried to flirt with the cash here. That ain't work. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I have a budget. My, so if I go to an amusement park... I'm I'm going there for rides, you know. I'm going there to get, you know, whiplash in my neck and possibly a stomachache. So I don't, <laughs> I don't like to eat a whole lot at the amusement parks. I'll eat like I'll usually eat something for lunch there if I'm there all day. So I'll get like a burger or whatever, you know, something something whatever they have there. But if I go to the fair or the carnival. I'm only going for the food. I'm not going on those rides that were just put up there yesterday. I don't trust them. I don't trust those <laughs> rides. So I'm going there for the food, and there is no budget. Is If my stomach can handle it, <laughs> and I see something that sounds good, I'm going for it. I'm going for the turkey leg. I'm going for the corn dogs. I'm going for the fried pickles. I'm going for all that. I try to so, tell... I try to tell myself that I won't spend more than fifty dollars if I if I'm at an amusement park for the entire day. Oh. Well, if I'm at an amusement park for the entire day, like I try not to spend more than fifty dollars. So if I'm at like a mm-hmm. carnival or a festival or something like that, um, I may splurge because I know you know the the food's not going to be super super expensive at, at like a festival or something unless it's like a seafood fest or something like that. And typically you get right, some right. really typically a lot of this, a lot of the seafood fests that that um, that happen down here my way, like um like like we're known. For, on on the Hampton Roads in the Chesapeake area, in the Chesapeake Bay area and stuff like that, like we're known for a lot of our for a lot of different like seafood fests and stuff like that. So typically, mm-hmm. when you buy your ticket for a seafood fest, you automatically get a voucher because it's included in the price of your admission. You get a voucher, you know, and and that's how we eat. But um, but normally, if I'm at an amusement park, like like we're like a over here in my area, we're a hop, skip, and a jump away from Bush Gardens. So over here in my area, if I were to, if I go to Bush Gardens, first of all, I I, I really have to think if I'm going to be there all day because I, I typically only go, go on a few rides because going to Bush Gardens for us over here is like going to the mall every weekend. Honestly, you know, so it gets it gets old fast. Mm-hmm. So you know, I typically only go there you. for the I typically only go there for the new rides and stuff like that. So um, mm-hmm. so basically, you know, um, amusement parks and stuff like that. Like I I'll, I'll allow myself fifty dollars to spend, and you know if. At that point, it's like, oh, if I'm about to spend, you know, if I spend more than that, I might as well leave the park and actually go get some some substantial food at that point. Right. right. Um, so, but um, normally my allotment, normally my allotment is for funnel cakes, some some random junk mm-hmm. food, and uh, use these funnel cakes, candy apples, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. some type some type of drink. Use it like one of those really super tall lemonades that you buy in those that you oh. buy in those uh. You buy those cups and you get like three refills while yeah. you're in the park. Yeah, the um, frozen lemonades. Oh. Yeah. Oh God, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then one meal at any of the like any of the spots. And usually, um, there's a at Bush Gardens, for example. There's a spot that's like a smokehouse. And man, like you mm-hmm. go in there. I think it, last time I was there it was like twenty seven dollars, but you got like an entire platter. It was like it was like you know oh, like yeah. a, a whole half a chicken, some brisket. Uh, you know, uh, you know your choice of two vegetables and stuff. Oh God. So yeah, I usually have I usually have an allotment for how much money I'm gonna spend in food, and also like you said, I, I'm not trying to be sick, you know, all day because like I hit a, mm-hmm. I, I do hit my fair share of roller coasters, not the wooden joints though. Oh God, no. Yeah, you, you don't like those. You don't, you don't like hearing. <laughs> you know what? You know I am t- I am too old for wooden coasters now. Like, I'm, you want me to have a guaranteed headache? Put me on a wooden coaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we have place near me called silver dollar city and if you live in the midwest you've probably heard of it and you've been there but they've got all kinds of food they got like a pizza place in there that's good they got a smokehouse in there that's good they've got uh like a place where you just get succotash and it's and they make it right in front of you and it's delicious oh, it is just and then there's all these not cool rides too that i'm like i can't eat and do this so i gotta i gotta go two separate days i gotta go one just to get food and one just to go on rides 
I do want to ask a bonus question, though. Okay. What's the weirdest thing you've eaten at a carnival slash fair? Do you all venture <sighs> out very much? Uh, you mean venture outside of our comfort zone in food? Yeah, so, like, you know, I, I think the weirdest thing I probably had was, like, a chocolate-covered grasshopper. That was, like, the one thing that I had at a at I, fair. I've, I've, I've had those, but that, but that's because I'm ex-military. I've had those before. <laughs> it wasn't at a fair when, <laughs> when I had it. <laughs> no, I haven't. Or, like, the um, donut burger where they got a Krispy Kreme as the bun. <laughs> okay, see, I love donuts. I love burgers. I cannot do that. Yeah, I... I, I think I, I, I haven't tried it. I just I it don't sound right to me. I think about it. I think about it. And I can feel like my chest cavity coagulating. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know I've eaten. I know I've eaten some weird stuff at at amusement parks or fairs just because. Um, just because, like, I get dared into this stuff sometimes, you know. Um, and I'm yeah. I'm pretty adventurous of food. Like, there's not a lot. There's not a lot I will I will refuse to eat. I. I will I will refuse to eat exotic stuff. And when I say exotic stuff, I'm not eating I'm not eating genitals of, of animals and stuff like that. I, oh, oh no. No. Uh, no. no calf fries here, man. No. Yeah. I'm I am i am not I can't no no reproductive organs. Uh every now and then every now and then I'll eat I'll eat a I'll eat a, a heart or whatnot. So I'm pretty adventurous with my food. But there's a certain but I'm also one of those people like once I know what it is, like I can't <laughs> I can't put it in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> So, so so here's like how chicken. Uh, sure it does. Sure it does. <laughs> so here's I, how here's how you get me. You you serve me something, and never tell me what it is, because <laughs> the moment you I find out what it is, I'm not eating anymore, and I might fight you <laughs> later on because you tricked me. <laughs> I'm eating frog legs, but I mean that's oh, frog, I don't legs like, frog legs are good. Frog, frog legs are frog legs. frog legs technically do taste like chicken. They do. They really I, do. I, I feel like I feel like it's because that's that's what that's how they cook it. I don't. I feel. Like, yeah. <laughs> that I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to ever. I don't want to ever try like broiled frog legs or you know like not the not Ooh. fried. <laughs> that sounds like it might be nasty. Imagine eating a boiled frog leg. I just, I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> But it can still be slimy or something. Like, Come oh, on, no. you know, you know, some somebody in the backwoods areas are eating it, like you know, like they're eating squirrel and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna ask my friend at work tomorrow because he 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 just bought last week. He bought turtles for turtle stew. That's what he literally. I've made. heard. Like, I've heard turtle soup is is spectacular. Though. I, I can't the, I can't bring myself to eat it though because I'm like man. Well, you know what makes it even worse is I found out that basically, like turtles, turtles don't really have like a true skeleton. Like their skeleton is the, is mainly their shell. And mm -hmm. and once I heard about that, I was like, oh man, it's just inhumane. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Some something, something's. I like. Do we have to eat everything? <laughs> can, can we just leave some animals off the menu? <laughs> right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. A fairy crypt in chat. She's like turtle soup rocks, and I, I've heard it too. I may try it one time, but you know, like I'm one of those people. Like you know, like like I said, like if it starts selling inhumane, then again, us eating, us eating meat is kind of inhumane. But guess what? I, I'm not giving up meat anytime soon. Oh no, no. I, I've slowed my roll on red meat, but that, mean, that doesn't mean all the other meat is off the table. I'm slowly <laughs> becoming a pescatarian, but. I feel like I feel like I feel like I am too, but but I still love I still love red meat, and I do love I do get I do get down on, on poultry. So yeah, I mean, oh, I'll, you know what you know what fairy uh, fairy crypt uh, our very own Celeste she's in the chat and she's like we're going to feed you some in in uh, in New Orleans up. If I come to a place and I know it's a delicacy oh, yeah. for that place, I will usually try it. Now, like yeah. I said though, like I said though, don't feed me intestines, testicles. That's, no, <laughs> you better make sure the turtle penis is not in the suit. That's, oh wow! <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> make sure you cut that part out at least. Okay, okay. So, uh, so lightning round, real fast. What event has the best? What event or place has the best food that you can't get enough of? Uh, I can't answer that. <laughs> 
for me, yeah, okay, <laughs> okay, for me, there's a there uh, right here in our in our city center. Um, every every holiday season, is, there's Holly Dazzle, and they pretty much got all that carnival street food type stuff. That's usually that's usually the place I go to because number one, I don't have to drive too far. As a matter of fact, I can either Uber it or I can I can drive my I can drive the car, park it park it on the outside edge of city center and walk in and then you know have my fun check out the fireworks see them like see them like the the christmas lights eat 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 whatever food there's a bunch of restaurants in there if i if i really don't want to want to fool with the other stuff and then i can just walk back to my car uber home mm. so yeah so it's it's holly dazzle <laughs> i'm gonna say anywhere where there's food trucks gathered it's a good time. That's that's that's. As a matter of fact, once you next, see more than like three food trucks, you know you're in the right spot. As a matter of fact, uh, next week's plate station is going to be food truck brawling. <laughs> it is a problem with food truck. It gives me way too much anxiety when there's more than like five. Of them. I'm like I can't. I don't get the time. <laughs> you okay? So we're gonna say we're gonna say it for next week. We're gonna say it for next week. I don't, we don't want to start talking. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, uh, Austin, did you have did you have a go a go? Uh, what's your like your best go to for like for like carnival or amusement park mm. food? Yeah, I I have to say like a food truck convention, or, or I'm gonna give a shout out to the Greek festival that comes once a oh, year. Oh yeah, Greek festival. It's uh, I get down with the desserts. I get down with all the rice and then mm-hmm. the calamari, uh, like Ooh. fried cheese. Yeah, let me stuff. tell. Let me tell you, I hurt myself when it comes to calamari. We have a, um, oh. we have we have a we have a, we have a restaurant here called called a uh, County Grill, and um, mm-hmm. they're no, I'm sorry, not County Grill, Harpoon Larry's. Uh, it, it, they're owned by County Grill, which is a which is a which is a barbecue place. Harp, mm-hmm. But Harpoon Larry's is more of a seafood place. And man, their calamari, uh, I used to. This is how dangerous it was. I used to live. I used to live in the apartments, and they were like literally a block away from the place. So, me and some buddies, like my buddies, were coming to my place. They would park their cars. We would walk to Harpoon Larry's, and we would just order like two or three big orders of calamari, and just do and just do do draft beers, and then stumble our drunk asses back to my, my place. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a good time. I, I'm not a seafood guy. I I don't like very much seafood at all but calamari i oh, it's good calamari it's good it's like well done cooked I, there's nothing better yeah like uh, there are so many ways to screw up your calamari and i and i and, and i am in particular snob about calamari like uh like i it has to have the right type of crisp it has to have the right type oh, yeah. of like 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 slices and cuts and stuff like that and god mm-hmm. And sometimes, sometimes they know I'm there, and they love me because they will make sure I have like a whole bunch of the tentacles, like the, the tentacle clusters. Oh, oh yeah. Oh mm-hmm. god. Yeah. I'm sorry. I went off on a tangent. Yeah. We're, we're I, talking. I don't like it when when you can see the imprint of the squid, where it looks like a little bitty squid. I don't like that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, like, oh you no, mean when they leave a little, the little, little nub? Little. When they leave a little nub yeah. on the top? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like mm, I don't like this. <laughs> like I said. tentacle pieces. <laughs> <laughs> all right but uh but uh okay so austin what's your uh what's oh you said that you said you said the food the food truck uh convention oh, yeah. nelly yeah. Mm. you don't have a go-to you just you I just would... eat you just eat it when you're there i was about to say i just eat it <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that hey, hey yeah. equal opportunity equal opportunity with food nothing wrong with that you gotta shout food. out your october fest too for your sausages. Oh, so you, you, you mentioned stuff. you mentioned the Greek Fest, and what I love about the Greek Fest uh, is it always comes around my birthday weekend. For in this oh, area, yeah. it's always like the very first week of June, and my birthday is June third. So, like, typically, I do hit up one Greek Fest. You know. Um, oh, and another thing, another thing. Uh, I'll tell you where else some good food is: a wine festival. Yes, I've never been, I've never been to. A, I haven't been to uh, the one at Epcot, but. No, 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 just, no, no, just go to, just go to one that's yeah. out here, just go to one out, that's out in your neighborhood or something, like, you, well, not in your neighborhood, because out oh, your neighbor, man. out your neighborhood is like bottom, bottom of the barrel, like, wine, stuff like that. We're gonna I all get $2 get wine tickets, from Aldi. <laughs> that's yeah, like, favorite. yeah, like, go to, go to one when you know one's affiliated with a good college, and man, like, there's, there's food. <laughs> I used to go, I used to get free Disney tickets, though. So. Wait, you used to get free Disney tickets? Yeah, I used to work at a hotel. 
Oh, I was about to say. I was about I to say what the street from Disney. I was about to say what type of hustle are you on? <laughs> <laughs> Getting free Disney tickets. Uh, we need to talk. Not anymore. I quit that job. <laughs> <laughs> I quit like two weeks ago too. Oh, all right, all right. Well, are, are we done talking about food now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> This is a good topic. I, uh, you know what? You know what's shocking me? Like I'm, I'm, I'm still coming up with food topics. Just like, just like, um, just like uh, Sunday, I hosted uh, Standard Definition because Corey's out on paternity leave. I hosted Standard Definition for him, and uh, we talked about and and uh, a question was sent to us like, what's our one of our favorite food medium? And 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 Colonel Panic and uh, Josh and I, we just went to town talking about like Food Network and uh, and uh, Netflix food shows and stuff like that. Oh. Oh yes, I, I love like my kind of conversation. How do we, how do we fall into this this, this boss rush network uh, network trap of talking about food on the shows? How do we do this? It I thought your idea to bring it. Did it's huh? in the DNA? Did didn't didn't we say in the, in the beginning though we're not going to be like the rest of those gluttonous people in boss rush network? Didn't we say this? Yep. <laughs> and here we are, a bunch of fatties talking about talking about food on the PlayStation show. <laughs> that's okay though i love it i love it <laughs> all right so so funnel funnel cakes uh corn dogs turkey legs that was the thing oh and churros of course that was a thing uh out there out there that's listening right now or in twitch hit us up let us know what your favorite uh which favorite amusement park or festival foods are carnival foods doesn't matter uh if you're listening to us on on our podcast shows uh, that airs on thursdays uh hit us up over at, at ps underscore crossroads on twitter let us know your favorite your favorite carnival or amusement park snacks you know okay so next week is food truck brawl and you know what maybe maybe we need to have like the and maybe real soon we need to have like the fast food smackdown. Maybe, mm. maybe we have to keep that separate because that's gonna. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we, oh, we won't. Oh, yeah, it'll be its own. It'll be its own topic. It won't be. It won't be part of. It won't be part of the food truck brawls. <laughs> we need to have like a an extra supplement episode of Crossroads where we just talk about food. Hey, you know what? Hey, room, you know. Just hey, food. that might be on the Crossroads Patreon. <laughs> maybe. You know we got some never mind. <laughs> save it for save it for after the show. We have we have a meeting for that. <laughs> all right, all right, but let's go ahead and move on now. <laughs> Here's some PlayStation blurbs the Crossroads crew uh, thought you might be interested in. Let's get. <laughs> what happened? What happened? <laughs> get crazy like that pound doing. Don't have to. <laughs> hey, hey. Again, <laughs> the Mountain Dew and donut. You can't knock it till you try it. Awesome. Not you try it. awesome. You do know like the rest of the Boss Rush Network has heard about that now. <laughs> oh yeah. And, and I, I stand my ground. <laughs> and, and I'm just gonna say, oh, and also uh Dan Murphy from, uh, from Pal Block. He and I he and I met up in Richmond for uh, for lunch last Friday. And and even and even and, and Dan didn't catch the show. So I was like, man, you missed it. And he's like, what I miss? I was like, our food topic. <laughs> he's like, what's the food topic? I was like, donuts. He's like, okay, that doesn't sound bad. So what went wrong? I was like, when Austin said that he washes it down with Mountain Dew, and, <laughs> and Dan just interrupted. He's like, stop. <laughs> but I think I've got it. I think I've got. I've got the scientific reason behind this. Uh, you know, the school donut is. cancels the sweetness of the Mountain Dew, and so what you're tasting in the Mountain Dew is the actual flavor, not just the sweet flavor. I'm telling you what. Stuff is gold. It's gold. Okay. You have a good time. <laughs> Austin, you are the PlayStation doctor, not the not the PlayStation gastronomist. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> oh, that that's why, you know, I make it <laughs> I I eat anything. That doesn't, doesn't mean my stomach <laughs> likes it. <laughs> You're like you're like you're like the alcoholics. They're like, like I know I'm beating my liver up, but I don't care. I, I'm gonna yeah. drink this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What was the show where I was like, if she dies, she dies? <laughs> what was that? Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's go. Let's get started with the blurbs. <laughs> all right. 
another confirmed PSVR game has been announced. Uh, Truant Pixel uh, has just announced Runner for PSVR 2, a cyberpunk feature driven by themes such as lo-fi and cassette futurism. And inspired by beloved stories like Akira and Ghost in the Shell, two very good, two very good anime. Uh, well, one's a movie and one's a franchise. Well, Ghost in the Shell technically is a is also a movie, but it's a franchise for me because that's my favorite anime show. But anyway, uh, this game is an action packed driving game with the addition of shooting and and different enemy forces. Um, also, it is your characters on a motorcycle. As expected, the game will have a head thumping soundtrack and an even dynamic music system. I need to see what that's about, actually. Uh, in the title, you'll play as Mina, who possesses the, the possesses abilities that further their opportunities in the world. Uh, there's an actual trailer for Runner I've actually included in our Twitch chat, so go check it out. Next up, Front Mission, Front Mission Trademark by Square Enix. Okay, now, I'm excited for this because I am a Front Mission fan. So, Square Enix has filed the trademark for Front Mission in Japan and a host of other countries. In addition to the Japanese trademark filing on March the 19th, the publisher has also filed front mission trademarks, include, uh, including in the following territories, Australia, North America, and Canada. Wait, North America and Canada? <laughs> That's all the same place. <laughs> that should be North America. That should be United States and Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably, the trademark means that a new front mission is in the pipeline, although nothing official has been announced by Square Enix as of this time. <laughs> front mission debuted back in 1995 for the Super Nintendo system in Japan, but most Western players wouldn't get their ch uh, first crack at the series until it made an international debut with Front Mission 3 on the PlayStation 1. I'm one of those people like when I was, I like a lot of kids back in my back in my day wow i just, i can't believe i just said that <sighs> in your day i grew up in the giant robot anime phase there we go there we go <laughs> that still kind of dates me but it doesn't sound like i'm some old geezer about to wave a cane around talking about back in my day, day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh i to yeah. say i'm i'm not familiar with this series at all so is You're it like not? gundams Basically, um, uh, pretty, yeah, kind of, but it was on. Much. Just think, <coughs> just think, Final Fantasy Tactics with mechs. Okay. Yeah, that, that's all I need to know. Yeah, Final Fantasy <laughs> Tactics with mechs is yeah. Front Mission, Front Mission was great, and I remember like reading reading the magazines. You know, back in the day when magazines talked about games that are out in Japan that we'll never get to play and stuff like that. Front Mission mm. used to show up a lot, and it started on Super Nintendo, and it was basically a game where it was like you're just. Parading around on mechs, you know, like just going in strategies, like like destroying other mechs and stuff like that. And it was so exciting. And I was like, man, I would really love to play this game, but there's no way I'm spending like $150 to import a, a Super Nintendo uh, cartridge. <laughs> no way. Uh, so when it finally came out, when it finally got announced that it was coming out in the United States on PlayStation, I I immediately like just dropped the money and got my copy. I was so happy. And then the sequel came out, Front Mission 4 on PS2. And man, that was another good one. And yeah, yeah, I was hooked. Uh, only five, only five games have been localized for the release in the U.S. and the U.K. So uh, there, uh, we. I can't remember the history because I know I played three of the Front Mission games that came out here in the in, in the in the states. Uh, one of them was on PS3 and on PC, and uh, after that, I kind of lost track of everything. <laughs> so, uh, Nelly, you. Have you ever heard of the series? I have not actually. See, I'm being oh. a nerd. I'm just, I'm just gonna shut up now. <laughs> what? No, because I'm about to actually look up the trailer. So. What? Uh, if yeah, I'm not, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, I think Front Mission. Well, I think Front Mission is on the PlayStation Classic Store, so you might be able to get it on PSP or Vita. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. I'm looking it up on Vita. That might be one of the last few games I buy. Exactly. <laughs> Our, our final blurb for the night. Uh, the Tekken director says esports is only a buzzword. <laughs> All right. So longtime Tekken director uh, Katsuhiro Harada, who also happens to be the esports manager for Bandai Namco, claims in his newest episode of Harada's Bar that the phrase is still just a buzzword and that Japan is lagging behind their efforts compared to other countries. Mm -hmm. Says Harada. Right now, esports is just a buzzword. The word has no weight. Only America and China are working on it seriously. 
Harada was also joined by the father of Ken, uh, PlayStation, Mr. Ken Kudaragi, uh, as a guest on the show. And he spent some time discussing how digital events will perhaps someday be even better than attending live live with things like virtual and augmented reality, allowing viewers to have their best seats in the house, th- though he admits the tech still isn't there yet. Uh, Mr. Kudaragi also describes how he originally wanted to include game streaming features like that of, of the PS4 on PS3, but Sony had to scrap that idea because the internet in places like North America and Europe weren't up to the task 16 years ago. As we all know, Sony recently acquired uh, the Evolution Fighting Game uh, Tournament, also in partnership with another company, which is a major esports event here that happens in, in the States, and uh, Japan has their own Evolution series now. And they're planning to make bigger pushes in the realm of esports. This is this is exciting. I said it before when we announced that uh, that that esports that you know Sony had acquired Evolution, but this is exciting because I mean like this all these plans like seeing seeing what uh, Kudaragi said about having like people doing virtual and augmented reality and actually being part of the you know the the tournament like being there in the seat in the seat in the seating and stuff. That's that's amazing. That just shows like there is some scope, and you know, hopefully, hopefully, everybody technology will catch up one day. Oh yeah, I was just thinking about that. Like with technology booming, video video games are just gonna. I mean, yeah, VR VR is getting more realized now and stuff like that. So yeah, there's there's opportunities for it. To get the scoop on all these blurbs, links have been provided in our Twitch stream chat. Go check them out and then continue the conversation with us over on our Twitter page at PS underscore Crossroads. Uh, Nelly, did we have a question? We did. We had one last week from my oh. friend YA. Okay. And uh, it came up while we were gaming uh, and he was asking if we think that Back for Blood will be crossplay. Back for Blood crossplay. Okay. I believe I believe that crossplay will happen, but I think it's gonna be I think it's only gonna be actually no, nah, let me let me take that back. I think it will be crossplay. I think the major platforms, PC, PlayStation, Xbox will have it. I feel like it's gonna be on a rollout basis though. Like kind of like how games are starting to like get rolled out with their crossplay now. That's the way I feel about it. <clears throat> back for blood's a big deal because I mean like it's it's from the creators of Left for Dead. Mm-hmm. You know, and and Left for Dead was a phenomenon. I, I of course I've heard that Left for Dead Two uh, was done by a different studio, and there was and there was problems with it, and it, and it helped make the series unpopular to a certain extent. But these are the original creators for Left for Dead, and um, they they know they know what the online presence is for games like this and stuff like that. So there's probably a good chance that there will be crossplay cooked into it. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys? Yeah, think? because I was thinking like a game like that. You have so many people who play it, so why not make it a cross-play game where everybody could communicate and every gamer could just come together? Yeah. Because I feel like they'd be missing out on money if they don't do it. Oh, That's yeah. just... Uh, well, not all the way, because Left 4 Dead is a big deal for some people. Mm-hmm. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, Left 4 Dead was just an Xbox exclusive, but Back 4 Blood is coming on every system, so it's like, yeah. why not take this opportunity? Yeah, Left 4 Dead was not on PS3. Yeah, and I, I think I think developers would be smart to make that a a big focus to get crossplay to work. For one good reason that we still it's still not looking good as far as everybody getting the consoles in their hands this year, and this is going to be only a current gen game. So you want that player base to be as big as it, as you can and be. And so I would I would be trying to get PlayStation, Xbox, and PC users. Uh, all together, especially since it's PVE, uh, mm-hmm. so you don't have to worry about like you know competition, like, like cheating and all that, all that crap. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know it, it's you're all working together to fight, and 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 most people are gonna hook up with their friends anyway. So that I would say wherever you buy it, it should be where you should be able to play it with each other. Yeah. Uh, the one other thing, the one other thing I will say about it is um. Is basically what you mentioned about like how how like it's still kind of hard for people to get systems in their hands. We're living in a, a pretty wonderful age right now with gaming because like we're like most most companies are giving free updates to the games. You know, like if you have it on one system, like you know, like 
some of them are just free updates. Like you get you get the next system when you, you know you still have your disc or whatnot, you get the upgrade, or you still have the digital purchase, you get the upgrade and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. A lot of it, you know, like we're living in wonderful times now. We get to the point where we don't actually have to spend the same cost for a game like, all over again just mm-hmm. because we have a different system now. And I'm and I'm kind of liking mm-hmm. that, you know. Honestly, honestly, it's almost like backwards compatibility. It almost is, you know, like that one thing Sony's kind of scared to do. It's uh, it's almost mm-hmm. like that. It's almost like that, but Sony used to just pull the trigger and you know just put their libraries on a server and stuff like that. You know, so, uh, you know, um, uh, Jim Ryan's talking about how Jim Ryan, right? Yeah, Jim yeah. Ryan's talking about how he doesn't understand why people want backwards compatibility. It's not the fact that, well, it is the fact that gamers want backwards compatibility. I know, I know, we're on a tangent right now. I'm sorry, but no, you but here's the thing about it, you know. People want people want it. It's the accessibility, just like with Xbox Game Pass. You know, it's the accessibility to these games and stuff like that. Even mm-hmm. if no one is actually playing the games, like just the fact that they have the subscription to whatever service you have that gives yeah. you the ability to play these games. Yeah, every once in a while they are going to dust off a PlayStation One classic or a PS Two game. Like I mean, I mean, yeah, like but you know there are games that are PS Two games that are on collections on PS Three and PS Four. Like the Devil May Cry collection comes to mind, for example. Like like th- all three of those games are on PS. PS2. You know, all three of those games mm-hmm. are featured on that one PS2, but you know. But, yeah. You know, unless they're going to keep pushing out collections and stuff and making sure the collections are have sustainability, you know, on the next systems, it's not going to hurt you guys to put these games on, you know, on a server, charge charge a, scrip- a subscription rate, you know, and then, you know, people can pick and choose when they want to play these games. Like, you're going to make money yeah. because, like, because, like, best example, I got a free I got a free five month trial for for uh for for YouTube Premium because mm. because I'm because I, I own a Samsung phone and, and a tablet so they gave me they gave me a free trial guess I, I guess what five months is a long time you forget about things so yeah so imagine mm-hmm. on mo- imagine on month six I saw like the nine ninety nine come out of my bank account I was like wait what like oh paid Google oh oh it's YouTube. And I thought mm-hmm. about it. I'm like, you know what? I love the fact that I have YouTube Premium, so I'll just keep paying for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And they just want to get you in. That's why Xbox was getting people for a dollar on Games Pass for the first six months. Mm-hmm. Like, are like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, we'll pay a dollar, and now it's fifteen. You don't want to live without it. So, everyone's mm-hmm. compatibility is a whole, whole other thing. But as I, a matter I think of fact, it, it does buy you confidence. Like, if you tell me that I can play my PS3, PS2, PS1 games, I have more confidence to buy from your your store, your ecosystem. Mm-hmm. I want to buy from the PlayStation Store. I'm not going to buy from, you know, Walmart or GameStop and trade in my disc or whatever. Exactly. And, you know, and, like, no one has a problem buying something on Steam because it's going to be there forever. Forever. <laughs> pretty much. Forever. Like, it's until... like it's going to be there forever. Yeah. So, but with the PlayStation Store, it's like, I have this feeling now, like, Oh, all those PS3 games I bought, that's it. My PS3 goes down, it's it's done. You know, mm-hmm. I can't. I Mass Effect that I I bought on digital and Resistance I bought digital, uh, those are gone if my PlayStation 3 craps out. So yeah, so either either me either a release a collection. A... Yeah, I mean, either... if you give me a Resistance collection, I I'll <laughs> buy it. I'll it's buy it. Hundred percent there. Yeah, I'll buy that's it. Either thing. give me either give me a collection <laughs> or. Collections. Either everything. give me a collection or open up your li- or open up your library and make it backwards yeah. compatible. Mm-hmm. Especially like yeah. with the Vita store and PlayStation uh, Three about to close down. I feel like yeah. I feel like I feel like we're waiting for the other shoe to drop. I have a funny feeling that this stuff is going to like be resurrected somehow. I, I really do. I really do. I really do. I just think Sony doesn't want to show their hand just yet, especially right now. You know, with the fact that you know Microsoft is making some serious, some serious cashola right now with, X- yeah. with Xbox Game Pass. And guess, and you know, <laughs> that's another thing too. Like, I did sign up for X uh, for Game Pass on PC. Yeah, I mm-hmm. spent a dollar a month for it for for five for six months, and then we were like, okay, it's gonna be four ninety nine now. I was like, oh, oh, five bucks. That's it. Sure, I'll pay that. <laughs> and now look at me. And now look at me. I'm thinking about throwing an extra ten dollars to get premium. <laughs> mm-hmm. I actually got a whole free year of Game Pass, but I'm gonna just shut up. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean there was ways to to kind of cheat the system to get even more, oh, yeah. but <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. And and also now, no, like... actually, it was given to me. I'm gonna just say that. Oh, mm-hmm. okay, you give it to okay. Yeah, it was given to me. 
Sucky, sucky now. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you fall into streams and you become close with streamers. Ah, uh, <laughs> see, see, women, women can get away with it more than men can. <laughs> no, no. She said, "Hey, send me a message if y'all want game pass." Hey, oh, okay, okay, never fine. mind. See, see, I was, I was trying to be lewd with it. Never mind. You said, oh. you said she. <laughs> oh, I'm no. only fans, not Twitch. I was confused by which stream you were talking about. <laughs> Smelly in HD. <laughs> <laughs> Corey's wishing Corey's uh, he trademarked that now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, that was, that was a great question, though. Um, that was a great question. Uh, if you want your question read on the show, tweet us at PS underscore Crossroads or email us at CrossroadsPSPod at gmail.com. CrossroadsPSPod at gmail.com. All right, so... It's time, it's time to break into the news and events. Uh, you know what? We are... Our, our, our buddy Zumi in our chat is already talking about it. And uh, it, this, is pretty much, this is pretty much it. The uh, PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now games are officially live as of right now. Get on the store and download them. Uh, April's lineup of free titles for PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now subscribers has gone live. And here's the breakdown of everything subscribers can add to their libraries as of right now. Starting with PlayStation Plus, we have three titles this month. Is it me or did they? Did they like? It used. It was normally four titles. They just four, like. They, yeah, they kind of like. Whatever, whatever. I'm not complaining. I'm not free game. Free game. I already got one. <laughs> First up, as a PS5 entry for uh, for this month is Odd World Soulstorm, which is actual launch title, which you can actually get right now. Right now. Yep, yep, I'm about to uh, put it in my cart right now. <laughs> <laughs> Odd World Soulstorm is the PS is the PS5 feature title for PlayStation Plus, and is set directly after the events of 2014's Odd World: New and Tasty. Abe re- and Abe is returning. You know, uh, I feel like I feel like as soon as everyone saw his face in that initial trailer, they knew it was an Odd World game. Okay. Uh, having under having undergone a transformation uh, from clueless cog in a mega corporate machine to unlikely hero in the Beacon of Hope, Abe must now save his fellow Mudicons uh, by any means necessary. Uh, recruit more followers, stick to stealth, and puzzle to solve or scavenge goods and craft an arsenal to liberate your friends. Uh, Next title, Days Gone for PS4. Okay, so here's the thing about it. Days Gone for PS4, a lot of PlayStation 5 owners got this as a complimentary title for the PlayStation Plus collection. So if you have missed out on Days Gone, never bought it when it was when it was actually new and fresh on PlayStation, now's your chance to get it if you if you have PlayStation Plus. So get this. Uh, uh I I don't know what else to tell you. Like Sony is just giving a, giving away this game because you know the next time you see it is going to be on on PC and it's going to be like twenty or thirty dollars. So oh, yeah. Sony Sony is giving you this game. So please do not miss out. Take an opportunity, get it, check it out. Uh, Days Gone, you ride into a desperate dog eat dog open world of the Pacific Northwest as drifter and bounty hunter Deacon Saint John. Uh, you risk the threats of the broken. You risk the threats of the broken road on the back of your trusty bike as you face swarms of mindless fill freakers and equally terrifying humans. All right. I uh, still wanted to play this game. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. hoping that when uh, when it comes to PC that we get a PS5 update for the game. That's kind of what I'm waiting on to play this. That's game. actually what that's actually what I'm waiting on too. I'm I, I, I or at least or at least they yeah, basically like what they did with um The Last of Us. When it came to mm-hmm. PS4, you know, like some type of update, yeah. you know, yeah. Oh, all right. And the last and the last PlayStation title for the month is uh the PlayStation Plus title for the month is Zombie Army Four Dead War. This is a PS4 title, uh, and you continue the alternate history of, of the Zombie Army trilogy. And here's new levels and un and uncover a sinister plan that takes the survivor brigade across Italy and beyond. Hitler's hordes are back for more in this spine chilling shooter from the makers of Sniper Elite Four. Uh, and multiplayer, uh, new campaign, one to four players, uh, sets in 1940s Europe as you fight to save humankind from an undead Armageddon. Okay. Mm -hmm. And all right. So I know Austin's got something to say about this. Uh, PlayStation now we've got three titles. The first one up is Marvel's Avengers. (laughs) 
I mean, Marvel- I said it like three months ago. We're gonna get it eventually. It's coming. <laughs> this game is bombed, and it's if which I think it was on Games Pass for a while, wasn't it? If I, I don't think I don't think it's been on Game. I don't think it was. I don't think it's been on Game Pass yet. Okay. I don't think so. So I imagine it'll be coming to Games Pass within the next month or two or so. Uh, they gotta they gotta make people interested, and you know Corey brought up a good point because I said maybe Black Panther DLC isn't selling, but maybe this will get people to get into the regular game, and then when it goes off, that Black Panther DLC drops, and now everyone wants it. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. All right. So, Marvel's Avengers is available to, until uh, until Monday, July fifth, twenty twenty one. So it's going to be on there for a short time. So check it out. Uh, you guys already know what's up with it. Uh, you're, you're taking the reins of Kamala Khan, and you must reassemble the Avengers to stop a force called AIM. Uh, and uh, it's it's a uh, it's single player or co op gameplay, depending on what you want to do. And just uh and check it out. Uh, Square Enix did announce that there's more DLC coming. The Hawkeye DLC just dropped, and the day it dropped, it also you also had the PS5 updates and things like that. And real soon, the Black Panther uh, DLC will be dropping for that. So so keep an eye out on it. Uh, next up is Borderlands 3, which is available until Wednesday, September 23rd, uh, 29th. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, September 29th, 2021. Everybody already knows what uh what Borderlands is. I don't have to really explain a whole yeah. bunch. It's, it's the also- original. If you don't have PlayStation now, it's twenty dollars on the sale right now. So oh, yeah, for the PS5 and PS4 versions. So if you want to get that on your PS4 and and then if you want to have it uh, have the upgrade at PS5, it's twenty bucks on the store right now. All right, all right, good luck. And the last one is and the last one for PlayStation now is uh, the Long Dark, which is a thoughtful exploration survival experience that challenges solo players to think for themselves as they explore and expand expansive frozen wilderness in the aftermath of a, a geomagnetic disaster there are no zombies only you the cold and all the threats mother nature can muster so there's all your titles uh there's all your titles once again recap odd world soulstorm days gone and zombie army 4 on playstation plus and marvel's avengers borderlands 3 in the lawn dark for playstation now question which of the playstation plus titles this month makes the membership worth it all of them. Why not? <laughs> I mean, I have no interest, no interest in Zombie Army Four, like at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not my kind of game. But Me uh, we're getting Day One Odd World, which is mm-hmm. awesome. And then you know, Days Gone is a uh, is a big time uh, first party game. So, um, which we we knew is probably about to come, considering the way they've been rolling rolling out their games here lately. Um, yeah. As soon as it stops selling, and then they're gonna put it on PlayStation Plus, and once they get as much money as they can from that, then they'll put it on PC. So we knew this was coming sometime, but great, and just great months. And just remember, Sony's giving out a lot of like class class A, triple A titles. Like I mean, Ratchet and Clank, the 2016 yeah. version, just just that's free for anybody. You don't have to have play, PlayStation Plus. Mm-hmm. And we're also getting Horizon Zero Dawn by the beginning of summer. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. All I'm, t- all I'm telling you is like Sony is giving you these games to get ready to get ready for them to put them on the PC. So I would not be surprised if God of War slips in there soon. Yeah, but I the think- one thing I, the one thing I will say, um, <clears throat> okay, because we know about the PlayStation, we know about the PlayStation Plus collection, the twelve games, the twelve games. Ratchet and Clank is actually one of the games. Days Gone is also one of the games. Um, do you guys feel like more of these games are going to slowly roll out? More of those games? Uh, I need to look at the lineup real fast. But um, the um, well, I was gonna, I was gonna say, Zumi brings that up in the chat, and I do wonder that. I wonder if PS Five owners feel a little bit slighted, considering you know they already have Days Gone. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it's good for PS Four owners, the people that are waiting on getting a PS Five, they have theirs. But you think maybe they would throw in a fourth game? Uh, just to kind of just to set the PS5 fans with more game options. Actually, actually, more my my main question is is uh, do you think they're planning on expanding the library? And and if they are expanding that library, when will it happen? Like uh, the first year anniversary of the PS5, or do you think they'll start rolling out the the uh, the expansion of the library before then? Uh, because let's see the uh. Let's see, because the games that were initially put out were, uh, let's see, 
Bloodborne, Days Gone, Detroit Become Human, God of War, Infamous Second Son, Ratchet and Clank, The Last Guardian, <clears throat> The Last of Us Remastered, Until Dawn, Uncharted 4, and then Batman Arkham Knight, Battlefield. Wait, I don't remember Battlefield. I don't remember Battlefield. Uh, Battlefield? Battlefield? Huh. I don't remember that one. Yeah, Battlefield Battlefield 1, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, Call Call of Duty Black Ops 3, the Zombie Chronicles edition, Crash Insane Trilogy, Fallout 4, Final Fantasy 15, Monster Hunter World, Mortal Kombat 10, Persona 5, and Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Those were... So we had... We had... We had 10... Wait, so we had 20 titles. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six, I think seven, there's eight, 20. Nine, ten. Yeah, okay. So the question is, do you think do you think the one year anniversary of play, of PS5 and PlayStation Plus, do you think we're gonna get a I don't think we're gonna get 20 more titles, but do you think it's safe to say that they're gonna expand, you know, more titles? Or do you or do you think this is like a one and done thing? I sure hope they expand just they because could expand. <laughs> It's a way to kind of say, hey, we're we're at least trying with Game Pass. You know, we're not getting the same thing. I mean, you know, this is with your PS Plus prescription. Um, <laughs> I said prescription. Prescription. <laughs> yeah. prescription. But, you know, like we're at least going to give you newer games. I mean, I, I mean, games like I think Borderlands 3 would be a good fit on there. I think like Devil May Cry, Cry 5 would be a good one on there. Stuff like especially, that could come Especially on given that the... Round. Yeah, especially given that the Devil May Cry Five PS Five Edition is the is the is the only one with with RTX and all that stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Shoot, speaking yeah. of speaking of people who'd be mad, just imagine if Devil May Cry Five, the PlayStation Five Edition, shows up on that. Then the people who ran out and spent sixty dollars for that game. <laughs> yeah, I mean they yeah. might want to wait another a few months. <laughs> That game looks beautiful on PS5, though. I I've yet to play Devil May Cry Five, but I've watched gameplay of it. And it's just, I've watched gameplay it's of it too. Spectacular on PS5. Yeah, yeah, I've watched gameplay of it too because I I played it on PC and I watched gameplay of it for PlayStation. And I was like, man, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous. All right, all right. So next story. Uh, the developers from Godfall expects the PlayStation Five SSD to be the biggest overall game changer. Uh, all right. So Keith Lee, the CEO of Godfall. Uh, the CEO of Godfall developer, Counterplay Games, has said he expects the PlayStation 5 Solid State Drive to be the biggest overall game changer, allowing for more than just faster load times as game makers squeeze more out of the hardware. Uh, speaking in the latest issue of the official PlayStation Magazine, the UK edition, Lee commented, over the next few years, I'd expect the SSD may be the biggest overall game changer. As we move from generic engine code designed to run on PC or PC to hand-tuned uh, streaming pipeline developed specifically for the PC- PS5, we should see amazing mm-hmm. leaps in both content details as well as the speed with which the content loads. This, w- this won't just mean denser open worlds would load faster, but super detailed small environments. Uh, Godfall was released on PS5 and, and PC in November of 2020 and served as a launch game for Sony's home console. Now, if you guys want a real, if out there, if you're listening to us right now, if you guys want to know, want to experience what an SSD experience looks like, just check out that Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart trailer. Yeah. All that stuff you saw when them jumping through dimensions and stuff, that was stuff that that was stuff that was already loaded because of the SSD. Like there, mm-hmm. there's. Like technically, that's your load time. That little, that little animation sequence. And guess what? It was super fast because sometimes, like, you're jumping between worlds, and yeah, you saw like a sequence. But you know, that was the game doing its thing. But there's also times when you're actually jumping from point to point on the map, and there's no load time, <laughs> no load time whatsoever. So if you want, if you want an idea, and me and my friends, like when we watched that, when we watched that PlayStation Five reveal trailer and stuff, and we saw like the Ratchet and Clank, we were in our chat and we we're like, man, like they're squeezing every drop out of that SSD right now. <laughs> uh, all right. Do you, so, do you uh, think? Uh, do you think this Godfall dev will say anything just to make sure that people didn't forget that Godfall is out and that you could buy it? <laughs> Possibly, you know, you know. Here's the crazy part. I thought the Godfall. I thought the developer for Godfall was also the same people that did um that did uh what's we call it Warframe, but they're not. Oh. No. Uh. Well. No, or, they're not the same people. They're published by the same people. They're published by Gearbox, so the same people who do Borderlands and stuff. And it's supposed yeah. to be like 
supposed to be like they called it literally they called it Swarderlands. It's Borderlands with swords. Um and <laughs> I love Borderlands. And I was like, mm, this isn't the same people. And you can tell, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just as much as people hate Randy Pitchford, like, <laughs> like this is not, this is not a Gearbox game. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, okay. So here's a question. The pre-installed SSD in PS5 systems is truly a wonder, but when do we think Sony will be ready to push out the update that unlocks the expansion slot so users may expand their hard drives? Hopefully soon, because I'm about to build up. Yeah, I was about to say, when are they going to uh, expand that? Expand. Like, I, I've, been, I've, I've honestly been just adding games to my library but not downloading them because I have no space right now. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh I, yeah, I mean, I well, oh yeah, I'm not like, PS5. I'm still on four. Sorry, <laughs> so I'm a staff uh, combination. I was gonna say, I I that's why I'm focusing on one game at a time, just so I can like take the game off my my hard drive and put something else on there, because right. I'm not buying Madden 21. Madden 21 is terrible, and I'm gonna wait for Madden 22 because it's gonna have. Because even if it is terrible, it's gonna have one of my favorite players on the front. So that's the only reason why I'm getting it. But well, once I get that on there, and then I have the Call of Duty and Battle, the next Battlefield looks amazing. And once I have all three of those games, I'm gonna um, be able to fit probably two games on there, and then that's it. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh yeah. Um. Well, rest in peace, anyone that's trying to get the Warzone update. <laughs> rest in peace. <laughs> Especially if you have the digital, the digital I'm PlayStation. I'm <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's 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 really my my answer to this question is it's really hard to say because I feel like I feel like they're gonna roll this out. Well, my original assessment was that back when Gran Turismo was promised to be out in July, I felt like that was when they were gonna roll the expansion out. Oh, and Austin, by the way, remember you can hook up an an external hard drive. And transfer the PS4 games onto that, and they'll load and run yeah. just like they would if they were on the hard drive. There is that option, but PS5 uh, games will on, will only run off the SSD, and I guess they mm-hmm. will also run off the M.2 SSDs that you're able to install later once the once the patch rolls out. But uh, right. But so that, that's I, the crazy thing is, outside of Horizon, which I was trying to finish up when I got the PS5, that's the only PS4 game I've downloaded on there. It's all PS5 games that I have on there now. Um, yep. All right. Last news topic. And we're going to make this one real quick. Uh, <laughs> patch 1.2 for Cyberpunk 2077. Guess what? It ru- uh, the game runs much better on PS4 Pro, but there are some sacrifices. Guys, it's been a while. It's been a while since Cyberpunk was a topic on our show. So let's rejoice for that. <laughs> All right. A full analysis has been uploaded by Digital Foundry, and the bottom line is that it's much, much better. It's a much, much better experience on PS4 Pro, but there are some caveats, some caveats. I don't know why I made it try to make it sound more fancy than, than, than the word actually is. <laughs> <laughs> while, the, while the frame rate certainly isn't perfect on Sony's supercharged last-gen last console, it now sticks most closer to its targeted 30 frames per second even in areas of stress, like marketplaces. The catch is that the Polish developer has turned asset streaming down to achieve it, meaning that many objects and materials don't uh, simply don't appear if you're moving quickly. The trade-off means that scenery details like chairs or advertising hoardings are, are hidden, unless you stop and wait for them to load in. Depending on how fast you're moving, the game may not stream them in at all. Unfortunately, things remain more or more or less the same for the standard PS4, where the frame rate is just all over the place. <laughs> uh, I have a stock PS4. I knew better than to get Cyberpunk <laughs> on PlayStation. <laughs> I I really want to see. There was a there was a picture going around of this guy who had a version 1.0 of the PS4. And a version of 1.0 of Cyberpunk. And I was gonna play it on there and see what happens. And I, I never, I never have to go back and see what it looked like. But oh, I can't man. imagine it being great. All right. So 
Two questions here. Uh, with the lofty design of Cyberpunk 2077, Cyberpunk, uh, I'm sorry, CD Projekt Red was aiming for a next-gen masterpiece. Should they have mainly focused primarily on next-gen and PC, or was it worth the gamble overall to try to get it on as many systems as possible? I think they should have waited. That's fair. That's fair. Because we're talking about like spoke. 10-year-old hardware. Yeah. And you developing a game. First of all, how long was that game in development, first of all? Eight years. At least eight years. Okay. Well, yeah, you should have waited then. Especially waiting this long and you knew you were pushing towards the end cycle of the console. Yeah. Well, the, well, the, prob the problem is that I think the problem is that CD Projekt Red was they were developing on bleeding edge technology. And bleeding edge technology, let's be let's be serious, is only is only meant for PCs. Mm -hmm. So my personal opinion is they submitted a PC game and then like the Witcher, then he tried porting it. <laughs> yes, I was just about to say that. Yes. That's my that's my that's my take on it, you know. I'm the I'm the infidel though. Like I, I left Sony to become a PC gamer and now I'm back with Sony. <laughs> well, I'm back with Sony somewhat. You you'll find out later in the what are we playing section. <laughs> I'll worry about you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so follow up question: Are there any hopes for Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven returning to the PlayStation Store? I hope so, at least for PS five. It it I thought it was <laughs> already on there. I thought yeah, I, right now. I thought it was yeah. That's the other thing too. I thought it launched for the next gen consoles as well as everything else. I didn't know that there was a there was not a delay, but there was a gap between the releases. I did not yeah, know that. I think I think it was supposed to be like in. I think it was actually supposed to be like now, like in April. It was supposed to be like the PS five update was out, and of course we. Yeah, they're still I, they're still I, working I, I, on I they're still working on making the game right. <laughs> yeah. I mean I told myself I was gonna wait until I could get a PS5 to play this game because I feel like that's where it needed to be played. But I just hope I get to play the game eventually the way they want it to be, you know, and that might be yeah. two or three years from now. And I'm okay with waiting as long as it's what they want it to be. I mean um, I mean, let's be honest, like The Witcher 3 didn't get fully realized until like two or three years after it was released. Yeah. But yeah, I will say The Witcher way. 3 was way, way better <laughs> off than <this. laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is true. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but you, you know what? We can say whatever we want, but um, but CD Projekt Red, in my opinion, based off of everything I've been reading, because uh, they just they just acquired a Canadian development studio, they're not hurting that bad behind the fumbles of the Cyberpunk oh. launch. But I know this, they can't make the same mistakes they made with Cyberpunk next time around, because mm -hmm. this will be their... This will be their, I don't know, their scarlet letter. If uh, if they the next the next project from them, if you know, especially if they decide to make it like a, a grand opus like Cyberpunk was, if they do the next the next project, they need to be low key and just kind of let it sneak up on us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, don't just be like, hey, this is this is this is our this is our 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 Beethoven's Waltz number five or whatnot. You know, just just like, hey, we got a new game coming out. We hope you play it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and then just wait and then everyone's like oh my god this is a wonderful game you know like let it come out you know how they do the state of play yes let it come out at the last one like the last one kind of like what kind of like what the mass effect legendary edition I did kind of like that <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> all right any final words any final words on any of our topics because we're it's about time for the big topic for tonight uh I'm still rooting for Cyberpunk. That's all. Me too. Me too. Mm. I am too. You know what? CD Projekt Red's going to get it together. They are. They are. I, I have a feeling. Yeah. You know. They'll be okay. We will. All right. So. All right. So it's time for the big topic tonight, and uh, let's get let's get started. All right. So Sony is currently nowhere to be seen following the E3 2021 confirmation, which is coming this June. All right. So, Sony is surprisingly MIA, uh, well, no, unsurprisingly MIA, from the list of publishers set for E3's online event this year. Uh, E3 2021 will go ahead as an online-only event, 
the ESA has confirmed. The digital show will stretch across three days beginning June the 12th and ending on June the 15th. And contrary to some recent rumors, E3 2021 will not be locked by any type of paywall. Once again, no paywall it is absolutely free for everyone who wants to check it out. This is a big deal. This is a big deal. I like this. I like this. You know, that's all I'm going to say about that. Confirmed so far, the following publishers will be present during the E3 2021 in some capacity. We've got Nintendo. We've got Xbox. We've got Capcom. We've got Konami. Konami. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Ubisoft, Take Two Interactive, <laughs> Warner <laughs> Brothers Games. Two. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying not to go there, but okay. Coke Media. Who is Coke Media? Because when I see when I see the name uh, Coke, I'm thinking the Coke Brothers, which you know, I'm, that's a dirty word for me. <laughs> why? Why have I heard that name? Right. I'm looking to. <laughs> Who is that? I didn't even have a chance to look that up before. Coke Media Games. Here we go. Well, 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 okay. damn. Well, they affiliated with Deep Silver. Okay, okay, hold on. Okay, okay. never mind. We've got we've got Metro Exodus, Saints Row, Dead by Daylight. Okay, never mind. I'm not gonna talk any more crap. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk okay. any more crap. <laughs> Rust. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna shut my mouth now. I was just saying. I wonder <laughs> they own like Deep Silver. I don't know. Do they own? Uh, what else do they own? Well, okay, let, let me say this. Oh, go ahead, Austin. No, I was I gonna say it looks like they were acquired by THQ Nordic in 2018. Oh, which, oh, which that, that was a big deal. Insane. That was a big deal, too. Yeah, yeah, they got War Horse Studios, uh, which is they did the Kingdom Come game, and they got Deep Silver, so mm -hmm. they, they've got a lot of different stuff. Yeah, okay, okay. Never mind. I'm not gonna talk any more crap about it. <laughs> I mean, unfortunate name, but whatever. <laughs> I'm just gonna say this. Can we get uh can I get my Dead Island 2 game, please? Okay. Do you Go really ahead. want that? I heard do you really want that though? I heard I heard like a couple the like the last game was kind of disappointing. I do want to give it a shot. <laughs> Mama, Mama Rose wrote me in chat more like more like why don't you why you don't know their name. <laughs> Okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> no, I know their name. I play their games. I just did not realize who they were. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was like, I heard this name before. And can we get another Saints Row game? Okay, anyway. Hell yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. exactly. You know, even though I will say I love Saints Row, I love Saints Row 4, but Saint Row, Saints Row 4 was, was kind of buggy. So please, you know, just... Let's be careful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed Saints Row 4. It, I, I, I kind of hate that you couldn't do customizable soundtracks anymore in that game, but you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Shout out uh, Johnny Gat. That's my homie. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just got a bad attitude. I love that dude so much. <laughs> Plus the fact it was Daniel Day Kim that was his voice actor. <laughs> you couldn't go wrong with that. <laughs> he was so smooth. I know. Okay, this is going off a tangent. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, it's obviously still sub. Uh, okay, so this lineup of uh, of of publishers, it, it's still it still subject to change at any time. Uh, we also do not know whether Sony will make a presence uh, at the show, but many in the industry are speculating that Sony will be a no show. Back in 2019, Sony made a point of stepping away from E3 and decided it would be hosting its own events. Sony was set to repeat that same maneuver in 2020, but the coronavirus pandemic put a stop to E3 last year anyway. The ESA also hopes to celebrate 2020, E3 2022 in person, but the official press release for this year's online event says to expect major reveals. So they know something we definitely don't. <laughs> All right, so here's our, here's our questions for the big topic. Uh, we've got two questions. First one. Sony's had a lot of major successes thanks to E3, but they've also had they've also proven that they don't need to share a stage with other publishers and developers to be just as successful. Will Sony really be missed at E3 this year, considering their other major events such as the online state of play and live events like the PlayStation Experience are their solo mega shows? Which, which, by the way. As soon as they announce that another PlayStation experience is happening, I'm buying tickets. <laughs> I'm buying yeah. tickets and I'm going to San Diego. 
I'm buying tickets. Boss Rush field trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or at least a crossroads field trip. I don't know if we're going to be able to get the rest of Boss Rush to go to go to California. We could go. <laughs> I'm down. I've been waiting to go to another convention. Let me go, please. <laughs> see, I see. I'm 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 needing to go to a good gaming convention, and PAX got canceled. So, oh well. I need yeah, to go to the I'll gaming be. convention, and I need to hit up a Comic Con. I don't care if I get New York Comic Con or San Diego Comic Con. Even though, even though I've no, I noticed this. New York Comic Con is where you go for Marvel stuff, and San Diego Comic Con is where you go for like TV, TV shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know which, whichever Comic Con I get on my list first is the one I'm going to. I was about to say because I was. <laughs> maybe I was, I can't, I'll get Boston too. this year. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Boston is canceled. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not this year. Maybe not this year. You know, like folks, like I get my corona. I get my second coronavirus vaccine on Thursday. So maybe not this year, but next year I'm I'm all in. I'm going yeah. somewhere. I'm I'm I'm, I'm, going tra somewhere. I'm, I'm traveling. You. I'm traveling, and also I'm gonna be one of those one of those nuts you see like in the raves and the, on the dance floor. So I'm drunk and I'm. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, when I went to Pax West, <laughs> I was out there dancing, dancing with this drunk dude. Everybody was carrying us home. I was <laughs> he was okay, back to. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Back to the question. <laughs> do okay. Do. Are we gonna miss? Are we gonna miss Sony at E three, or do we? Or do we really think that Sony's is gonna Sony's gonna gonna kick it in the ass no matter what they do? I think Sony would be okay. Um, like I, uh, they do hold a lot of state of play, so yeah, like there's usually <laughs> at least there's usually at least three or four state of plays a year. Mm -hmm. And that's not, and that's not including partner events they do because like Sony, Sony partnered that the last two Resident Evil uh, online experiences. Sony, that was that was Sony. They were hosted by Sony, <laughs> and I think the next one, the next one is happening in May. Oh, is I was uh, say they got another is, one coming up. Yeah, they got another one coming up. Yeah, because uh, I remember them putting out the banner for it. They was like, "If you're gonna host us, mm -hmm. let us know." This and that. Um, uh, let's see in the chat right now. Zoomy, uh, Zoomy two thousand nine is saying, "I think it will hurt them, considering how long it's been since conventions have happened. With no paywall, so many people are going to tune in to see it. You know, I still don't know the viewership for the uh, for this for the state of play. And you know, I know it's not accurate now to look up. I'm going to look it up anyway. Uh, the the last state of play just happened. You know, I've never I've never really like like taken a lot of stock in um in the viewership." On YouTube, but yeah, like the live viewership for the first day, I I take it, I I pay attention to that. But it's been a couple of months now, so you know, like some people just you get a you get a hit on on a YouTube video if someone's watched. What is it like like fifteen percent of the video? Like you get you get credit for a viewer, mm -hmm. you know. And you know, in my opinion, that's not enough because some people are literally just there to look for one specific thing when it's like an event like this, and then they and then they stop watching it. But let me see. Uh, you guys talk about that real quick while I find while I find out how many viewers that last day of play has had so far. Also, um... okay, okay, streamed one month ago on PlayStation. It has one point nine million views. On IGN, it has another eight hundred sixty thousand. Mm. You know what? I I don't think it matters too much because. This is kind of what PlayStation's been doing and what EA has been doing for years, and that's kind of having their own thing, mm -hmm. but around the same time as E3. So everyone, they're still getting the hype of it. They're just got their own show, and they're not paying E3 for for time that they that they don't need. They they've got their fan base. They don't really need E3 to kind of put them on blast. Yeah, um, I think it'd be a cool thing if they did do it, just because it's like, hey, we all had a rough year. Mm -hmm. uh, last year's summer of games sucked. Sorry, Jeff Kylie, but <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't, no, don't apologize. <laughs> don't apologize to him. I mean, <laughs> I'm just glad that we're all getting it in one big event. Gamers can come around and say, "Hey, I'm gonna take that week off of work. You know, it's two or three days off of work, and we're just gonna watch a bunch of video game presentations. We're all gonna get excited." Whereas last year was like, "Oh, there's news here and there's news there, and and there's like news." little bitty news every day that it's just like, ah, uh, I can't keep up. Whereas this is like, all right, everyone focus, you know, we can all watch it together and, you know, we'll, we'll rag on Ed for how, how much Nintendo show sucks and all that stuff. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> the that's the fun part. 
you know? And so I'm, I'm you invoked his name. You get that kind of deal, you know? <laughs> you invoked his name. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Don't worry. He'll, he'll listen to this and he'll message me about it. It's, you know, you I know, he knows I'm you know what? Speaking speaking of Nintendo, I feel like I feel like so far this year their their shows have been underwhelming. I really well, do. I think the E three is going to be huge. I it, I really think it, this you is think it's going to be huge for Nintendo. I think this is where you're going to get your Metroids. I think this is where you're going to get your. Uh, I don't believe you know, it. Breath of the Wild. Dude. I don't believe I, it. This I, is no. this is the this is the thirty fifth anniversary year for Zelda and Metroid. And so far, like the two like the two things that Nintendo has done so far, they. I'm sorry. Who who cares about Skyward Sword? <laughs> for what for what I'm hearing, the general consensus no from honest with themselves. <laughs> from what I'm hearing, the general consensus from the Nintendo community is they would rather have Twilight Princess. I, I mean, I would too, but I would too. I would too, given that I'd already gotten rid of my GameCube by the time it came out, and I was not really pressed for it on the Wii when I bought it. Well, oh yeah. I, I, I'm willing to put money. I'm willing to put money. We see Breath of the Wild 2 and Metroid Prime both at this E3. Austin, I'll both. buy you... I, okay, I won't... Austin, I'll buy you a... I will send you a... <laughs> I will send you a gift card somewhere. Maybe... Hey, all right, can you do Texas Roadhouse or whatever? Oh, yeah, I can do Texas Roadhouse. Okay, all right. So you. So bet here you it is. Bet you a here, steak dinner? Huh? Bet you a steak dinner? I'll bet you a steak dinner. All right, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. I better get my damn <laughs> peace preserves, though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's extra. You don't gotta do anything. For that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Paying for the potluck. Austin's paying for the potluck. All right. I might send some scalloped potatoes too, because I need I need some respect for scalloped potatoes. That's uh, for sure. <laughs> actually, okay, never mind. There was only the one question about. Well, in my opinion, uh, in my opinion, I don't think it would be nice for Sony to have its presence there, but at the same time, I don't think Sony's going to be missed particularly. And 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 you know, people are making a big deal that Sony's not there, but remember, Nintendo started this whole thing of bowing out of these shows. Mm. Like Nintendo was the first one to say, "Hey, we're not going to have a press conference. We we'll have some games on the floor, but we won't have a press conference. You have to tune into our channel or whatever we were doing first. And then eventually, Sony and Microsoft kind of did the same thing. And and you know, in all honesty, I feel like I feel like when all those when all when the big three did that, I feel like that's when I started losing faith in E three. Mm-hmm. Honestly, you know, like yeah, I tuned into E three for the announcements every year, but you know, it was one of those things where I was like, okay, if 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 Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo aren't putting their press releases on E3, then what's the point of us tuning in nowadays? Yeah. That was my that was my thing. That was my thing. You know, maybe maybe I'm just this knob elite gamer, you know, whatever. But I, I feel like I feel like if you don't have buy-in from the big three, it makes it harder for these other for these other publishers, you know, like like Capcom, Konami, Ubisoft, Take Two, Warner Brothers. Right. You know, I feel like it makes it hard for them to also shine because, you know, I'm used to the days when, like, for example, and yeah, this this is just this is a sore topic, but remember, um, Watch Dogs, the first one, mm-hmm. that was the that was the end note of the PlayStation press release. Um, what's another one? What's another one that um that that also I remember Monster Hunter World, uh, a couple of years ago. That was the first game on the PlayStation press release, and you know, yeah. and you know what's funny. It was back in the time when I was like, "Oh, Monster Hunter's Monster Hunter's staying on Nintendo." So just imagine when my jaw hits the floor. The first thing that rolls out is a Monster Hunter game on a on the PlayStation press release. <laughs> yeah, I feel like yeah. I feel like when you don't have the big, I feel like when you miss the big three, there, other companies have to work harder to make a presence. So like these Capcom, right. Canada, all these companies, I feel like they have to work harder to make their presence known. Because let's be honest, with you, Ubisoft puts on a boring press conference by themselves. They do. Oh yeah. 
We don't want to see the Just Dance people. Yeah. <laughs> Warner Brothers Warner Brothers does a decent job when they do show up. Warner Brothers isn't always at E3. They're not. Yeah. They're, they're not. And they don't, they don't always have the big floor for a press release, you know. Uh, Take Two Interactive, we already we already know what we're, gonna, what we're getting from Take Two, you know. But I feel like when... When you have your shows, like when you have your your games as part of the big threes press releases, that's when you get the real hype, the real momentum. Oh, yeah. Remember, Beyond Good and Evil Two was on an Xbox uh, press release. Yeah, remember that? that? Was a game. Yeah, that was a big deal. <laughs> yeah, I. Did they ever say anything about Plus... that game? Anyone? No, they haven't said no. anything in the last four <laughs> years. Did. They haven't said anything about <laughs> it in the last did. four years. <laughs> that game's a limbo. Even Ubisoft doesn't know when that game is coming out. <laughs> what, what's, his face, what's his face came out and said, "Yeah, we're, I'm part of this game," and then like he never talked about it. Like, what was that actor's name? Uh, 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 what is his name? The guy who plays um Dick Grayson in Dark Knight. Oh wait, 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 wait! He's not Dick Grayson. Hold on, I'm looking at names. Oh, Joseph Gordon Levitt. <laughs> Just Gordon Levitt. That's right. Yeah. He showed up. He That's like, right. Yeah, part of this game too. And then, That's right. Where did he go? I don't think he's done a movie since. I think they had to hush him up. They're like, hey, man, you can't talk about Beyond Good and Evil hey, 2 anymore. Hey, remember, Cyberpunk was part of uh, Sony's press release. Remember that? This is a... This is, okay, yep. it's a big fucking deal when the big three are at these shows. When they're not at these shows, guess what? I Yeah. It, it it's just like a, a, a slow boil. Like, you know, it's like... And, and Xbox really probably isn't going to have a whole lot of other people. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. I take it back. Have... I take it back. I take it back. Cyberpunk was Xbox, was on Xbox's yeah, yeah, press yeah. release. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. But, but they still, you get the point. Now, who, who had their own conference at E3. Yeah. So yeah. now mm -hmm. the Xbox is going to have Bethesda. They're going to have mm -hmm. all their games involved. I don't think they're going to have very many third-party games. If they do, I'd be, I don't think there'd be very many. But and and here's the thing about it, like you know, we don't hear a lot about indies at E3. Like we no nowadays we hear about indies from Sony and Nintendo. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, I'm going to tune into E3 2021. I am, but my my hype factor is really low. You know, Capcom is there, so I have a funny. We're gonna see like we're gonna see all the games that Capcom showcased on the PlayStation Five event, the the reveal event. We're gonna see all those games. We might get an announcement from Monster Hunter Six, given that Monster Hunter Rise, it it Monster Hunter Rise has already shipped five million units, and the game's only been out for eleven days. You know, so Capcom, yeah. so Capcom, you know, and you know what Capcom is, Capcom's having the time of their lives right now. Like, shoot. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, when we wrote, when we think back on it, Mega Man 11, Devil May Cry 5, Resident Evil 2 and 3 Remake, uh, Monster Hunter World, now Monster Hunter Rise, Street Fighter 5, well, Street Fighter 5 has finally gained some momentum. It was not one of their best selling games, but Street Fighter 5 is gaining the momentum now and all that stuff. Capcom's on a roll. Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 8. Resident Evil 7, out. Resident Evil 8's coming. Yeah, Capcom's on a roll. So, you know, Capcom's probably going to have a, a lit. Press release. They probably oh, yeah. are. They're, they're probably just going to celebrate. They're, gonna, <laughs> they're, just gonna they're like, we're not going to talk about. We're not going to talk about new games. We're going to talk about all the games that you that you guys helped make us rich. <laughs> hey, remember all those games we gave you? Yeah, we're cool. That's it. That's all we want to do. <laughs> we're cool. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, good, good, good discussion. Good discussion. <laughs> all right, so. For you guys out there that have been listening, let us know what you think. Do you think the successes that Sony's had because of E3? Do you do you think E3 even matters for them, or do you think Sony's going Sony's going to be all right? Basically, let's put it that way. Hit us up at PS underscore Crossroads on Twitter, or hit us up wherever you can get in contact with us. Uh, as a matter of fact, I forgot to put the uh, I forgot to put the link for our for our for our email. So let me go back and put that in the chat right now. So hit us up at PS underscore Crossroads on Twitter or Crossroads PS Pod at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you anyway. Send us some email. Show us some love. We, we, we want to hear. We want to hear from you. All right. Uh, no rumor control tonight. Honestly, I feel like right now everyone's buckling down to get ready for like their new releases. We've got some games coming out real soon. Kenna's next month. Right? Kenna's no, in April, right? August. Oh, oh, it's been yeah, delayed I again. They, you pushed it, yeah. They pushed it back. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, Returnal at the end of the month. Re we yeah. got Ratchet and Clink in June. And we got uh, Resident, Resident Evil. Evil Resident Evil in, in May. 
Resident Evil 8 and uh isn't Mass Effect coming out in Yeah. Yep. Oh my yeah. god. I I I'm almost I, I I almost I almost I almost want one oh, of those games. What? I almost want you know I, I I would be shocked if Mass Effect uh Legendary Edition happens to drop on Game Pass because because guess what EA Play EA Play is now part of Game Pass. Yeah, I don't know what I don't think EA would allow that. You don't think so? Is it, no, because EA doesn't let their games on there for like six months. Well, well, hold, games... well, hold the phone though, because uh, MLB The Show Twenty One is on is coming to Game Pass. Yeah, Open, that was op- that was MLB's decision. That wasn't Sony's decision. I think okay. this is going to be EA. EA is going to be like, hey man, we want to get some sales first, and then it can come to EA Play, mm-hmm. and then come. On. I don't think it's going to be on. I, I would say I'd bet you a steak dinner on that one too, but I'm I'm already might be down one, so I don't want to be down two steak dinners. Wow. Hey, I'm, hey, uh, I can't believe I can't believe I actually walked into that bet, but whatever, we'll see what happens. You know, I'm not gonna be a sore loser though, so you know we'll see what happens. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a bet that I can actually do. I'm not gonna be like Dan and say I'm gonna eat my shoe and then never eat it. You know, where, where, <laughs> well, you know what the video, where... you know what, though, I feel like uh, I feel like Nintendo's actually doing him a solid right now because it looks like he may get he may not have to eat his shoe. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. Say, if your wallet's going to be burning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, guys, what have, what do we what what's the Crossroads crew been playing right now? Uh, who wants to go first? Oh, oh, I played something. I played something. Finally. Oh, oh really? This is gonna be good. Me and my cousin was playing. It takes two. <laughs> oh, yeah. How my room, my my roommate and his his buddy are playing it right now, and and I and they've said they said it's good, but no, but my roommate my, my roommate is an elite gamer. Like I mean, when I say elite, he only plays PC games, and he's like he's like I like this game, but uh, I feel like I enjoy it way out more. And I'm like, why why you feel that way? He's like, this game is just kind of wacky, and I'm like. That should be a good thing, right? But he's more serious of a gamer. He he likes uh, he likes serious games. He doesn't like games. That, he likes games that have fun factor, but he likes more serious games. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like it. We I I never laughed so hard in my life. <laughs> like I was over like gasping for air and everything. Oh, <laughs> by the way, I found out I found out what Ed's beef is about this game, and it's not so much the game. It's about it's about the the the, the director Yosef Fares. Yeah, uh, yeah. Apparently, he rolled out on the Game Awards a couple of years ago, and and kind of like just you know just he was being in Ed's words, he was being a dick about it. But I put it like this: like I, I've always liked I've always liked people that are out there to disrupt the system. And I, mm-hmm. I went back and I looked up like his appearance on the Game Awards, and I was like, you know what? He, he's he, he's on point. He's on point. Like you know, disrupt the system. That's how you get better things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But yeah, this is me. This is me. But I can be a bit of a troublemaker, as you guys all know in the Boss Rush Games chat. I can be a bit of a troublemaker. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, I get that. There's, there's certain things that I don't really like based on you know whoever made the game. But at the same time, I mean, there, there's some games that I've played where the people that <laughs> people that made it, I, I do not agree with, or they just sound like ignorant people but i still enjoy the game for what it is because there's a lot of other people that worked on it you mm-hmm. know and yep. so and it take two looks awesome i don't oh, know oh yeah Maybe oh yeah i'm going i'm going to play, play this game i'm going to oh, play this yeah. game if uh if i can't get my wife to play with me which i probably can't i will uh, i'll try my hardest to get ed to play uh, ed come on play with us <laughs> You know how you you got to lie and tell me you're gonna play Paper Mario. That's, that's oh, how yeah. you give them the play. <laughs> hey, you're gonna have to tell a lie. There's a new what? Paper Mario uh, two player, <laughs> and uh, it looks like a Pixar movie. Uh, it doesn't have Mario in it at all, uh, but it's a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Austin, what have you been playing, man? Uh, wait, Nelly, is that was that the only thing you pl- you managed to play? That's the only thing I Besi- played. Yeah. Besides playing them books. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So, okay. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> Austin, what have you what have you been playing? Uh I have been so I don't know if I didn't oh I wasn't on last week. So I I finished control and so I started Maneater, uh, mm-hmm. which is the game I've always wanted 
where I got to be a shark and and cause havoc on the world. I mean, I just they literally just took everything inside my brain and put it in a game, and I love it. Um, it's really funny. Chris Mar- It's a it's a pretty like dumb playing game. It's not very uh, control heavy. You know, it's like <laughs> it's, it's pretty basic basic controls and stuff. But it's a lot of fun. Chris Parnell is the narrator, and he's absolutely hilarious <laughs> in this game. Uh, um, and I enjoy his humor. So I've been playing that. Uh, I finished Halo, the first game, mm-hmm. uh, with my friend Nick on 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 uh, on Xbox, and then I'm playing Murder by Numbers on Switch. Oh yeah, I, then... saw, I, I saw you playing that the other way the other day too, because uh, I was playing. Well, I was playing Monster Hunter, and I saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I thought about buying Monster Hunter, but I'm already in the middle of that game, so it's like, all right, I'm gonna finish this. I don't think it'll take me too much longer. Uh, because it's you know it's a pick cross game you know but I, I'm invested in the story so I want to see what happens but mm-hmm. yeah I'm I'm looking to play Monster Hunter uh, and then I downloaded Outriders on Xbox One um to try it and see if I want to buy it on PS Five oh, I was about to say and then <laughs> but it took like fifteen minutes just to load and like to finally Ooh. get to like a home screen and then Ooh. the home screen was loading really long. I was like, man, uh I might want to play this on the next gen. Yeah. I don't think my Xbox is built for this right now. <laughs> um, which mine's an OG Xbox One. It's 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 an so it's not a series uh it's not like the Xbox One X or Xbox Xbox One S. So I yeah it's it's chugging. Just the loading screen had it going pretty hard, so I never heard my Xbox make that much noise. I mean, my PlayStation made that noise all the time, but <laughs> the Xbox that was like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, playing a lot of different stuff actually. So, all right, cool. Well, I mean, the only thing I've been playing for the last few days is Monster Hunter Rise for the Nintendo Switch. And but I mean everyone knows everyone that knows me knows I'm a Monster Hunter player, so it's no shock there. I'm having a lot of fun. As a matter of fact, I'm having so much fun that me and uh, Galatrad from Pal Block have started a Monster Hunter podcast show. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which I'll give some more information on that in a few minutes. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's been it. But you know you know what's crazy though, all my gaming time currently has been spent on Monster Hunter Rise. I am only now at 40 hours. Some people are already hitting 100 hours in the game. And I'm like, do you have jobs? What is going on? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, there was people in Japan that straight up just canceled work. It was they like, did, yeah, they didn't go to work. Off, so. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you, had, uh, if you have a package coming from Japan, it might be delayed for a little bit just because of Monster Hunter Rise. You know? Yeah, like, yeah, the, the mail's not moving in Japan right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah, but that's that's been it. that's been pretty much what what I've been playing, what I've been doing. Um, so uh, that's our show for tonight. Uh, we'll let me go ahead and give a big thanks to you for tuning in the Crossroads, uh, the PlayStation Podcast. And before we go, here's how you can stay connected with our crew, Nelly. You can find me on Twitter at Planet Nelly. Nelly is spelled N three L L I E. Find me on Twitch at Brathface underscore eighty seven. All right, Austin. Awesome. Find me at Placed Austin on Twitter. You can see my uh, PlayStation name on there as well. It's the same thing. Uh, you can find my Switch code. Find all my information there. Find me on LAN Party as well on on Wednesdays on podcast services. Uh, please go check us out. Uh, we're always having random guests. We've had Laron and Nelly both on before. Uh, we'll have to have them on again. So. And uh, go a, check it out. It's just a, yeah. it's just a good podcast to uh, not talk about games sometimes. You know, just like you, you want to hear a lot about food and Logan's bad opinions on them. Uh, you know, check out that show. You know what? I'm not gonna throw any shade tonight. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you can find me on social media at Exodus eight zero three E X O D U S eight zero three. Also, you're tuning into me right now on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv. Exodus eight zero three. Please, if you have nothing to do, you love Monster Hunter, come back tomorrow night at eight o'clock for Hunters for Hire, the the new podcast with me and Galatrad, Jacob Taylor. Uh, as we talk about some Monster Hunter stuff, we and we're not just talking about Rise. 
we're talking about everything Monster Hunter because this game has been around for for almost 20 years now. So we're some Monster Hunter nerds. Please come check us out. Everyone knows I love Monster Hunter and, this, and Jacob loves it just as much as I do. So check out Hunters for Hire uh, uh, every Wednesday night on this channel. Uh, also, XS803 is also my gamer tag. So pr practically any place I play video games, PlayStation Network, Xbox, Xbox, Xbox Live, uh, Steam, I'm there. I'll eventually start sharing my, my Twitch code. I'm, not, I'm sorry, not my Twitch code, my Nintendo code. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, here's a reminder to head over to BossRushGames.com uh, Boss and take a look at all the uh, content BossRush has to offer. Uh, this uh, The current BossRush banner wants to know how video game music has impacted your life. Real, real fast, real fast, because the show's coming to an end. What is what is your what is one video game soundtrack you just love to listen to no matter what's going on? Streets of Rage two. Streets of Rage two, good one, good one, awesome. If uh, if it's not like an original soundtrack or licensed soundtrack, because uh, that uh, just 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 throw it out there. What is it? Well, I will say licensed soundtrack. Burnout 3 and ATV off of Fury 2. Those okay. basically shaped my taste in music. Uh -huh. But then I love, love Mega Man 2 and 3 and Shovel Knight soundtracks. Hell yes. Those are my Hell yes. I love Hell. those. Hell yes. Um, <clears throat> I love you, man. You still almost think it though. I. I Mega Man, I I will say this. Mega Man Three, I think I like the soundtrack just a little more than two, but two is a better game. I like two <laughs> what seven. two is a better? Uh oh, I think. Oh, I love Mega Man Two and Three. I do, but I feel oh, like I Mega Man, them. even though even though Ed's been schooled me on uh, Mega Man Three is a universally flawed game because apparently mm -hmm. there was like a whole bunch of technical glitches that never that never that never were addressed. But aren't oh, all yeah, NES they, games? They, they, under a year, they did yeah, it but, under a year. <laughs> yeah, but aren't all NES games like like there's there's underlying technical glitches everywhere in NES games? But uh, yeah, uh, you know what? Actually, uh, you know what? I I I feel like Mega Man Three. Mega Man Three, in my opinion, is like in my opinion, is a better game because like there's just more content. Like you fight yeah. the eight, you fight the eight robot bosses and then you fight the eight again from Mega Man Two. Come on, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> I mean, I'm not I'm not disparaging. I like them both pretty much equally. I think I can objectively say two is a better game, but like three soundtrack and the stages, like I just like them more. I, I yeah. always like. Come on, man! This come on, man! The Snake Man soundtrack, uh, the, the Snake Man oh. stage music, the, the Needle Man stage music, even the Gemini Man stage music. Come on! Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. For, for me, uh, you know, I'll I'll I'll, I'll do what Austin did. Uh, license game, uh, license music from a game. Uh, it's SSX Tricky. <laughs> oh yeah, classic. And uh, and one of my favorite video game soundtracks that I listen to uh, all the time is the Einhander original soundtrack. From the PS One shooter game, I, yeah. I haven't heard that one. Oh god! One. Oh, I'll hook you up. <laughs> Send me a link. I'll, I'll hook you up. Uh, so yeah, uh, check out check out the Boss Rush banner uh, uh, about uh, about video game soundtracks. Uh, how, what video game music means to you, and uh, and yeah, that was written by Blocks uh, Blocks Gaming Reviews uh, for uh, Boss Rush. Uh, also. Galtrad has put the has put up in a review for Monster Hunter Rise, so uh, so check that out also, um, and uh, and and lastly in on episode nine of Standard Definition podcast, the crew talks about potatoes and superheroes. I'm just gonna leave it at that. You guys are gonna have to like go there, go there, check out the check out the podcast, and and figure out what it's all about. <laughs> check it out. It's a good episode. I listened to it today. <laughs> That's why he was talking about. That's why he was talking about scallop potatoes. Yeah, hint, that hint. was the only bad part of the whole show. Oh, whatever, like, whatever. Like, what? Whatever. Like, hmm. what? No. whatever. <laughs> don't. <laughs> 
Don't forget about other shows and editorials available over at BossersGames.com. And if you can't get enough of hanging out with us, come hang out over at our Discord community, simply called Boss Rush Games. Uh, the link's already been provided in the chat tonight. Uh, Boss Rush Games is calling for all writers. Are you passionate about video games? You enjoy writing? And are hoping for a place to publish? Email us at opportunities at brg at gmail.com. I swear, our email addresses are, are always mouthfuls, aren't they? Super long. <laughs> aren't they? They're okay. always mouthfuls, but the good news is I've said them enough now that I don't get tongue twisted anymore. <laughs> yes, opportunities at brg at gmail.com to apply. If you're curious about what we do, I've already I've already talked about a couple of articles right now, but check us out at bossrushgames.com today. One more time, final roll call. You can chat with us and keep the conversation going by hitting us up on Twitter at PS underscore Crossroads, where we hold it down with more news, events, and topics throughout the week. That's our show for tonight. The Boss Rush Games family wants you all to have a great night and go out there, play games, and be better. Take care, guys. Bye. Okay, bye. Go listen to Mega Man 3. Hell yes. <laughs> and Ein Hunter. <laughs> I'm not, I don't even know how to spell that. How do you- <laughs> <laughs>